Hey everyone, welcome back to our um, second lesson in our Watercolor for Beginning Beginners series. My name is Olivia Reardon and today we will be working on our second part, our second lesson, which we'll focusing on Albertan landscapes. The first class we did, so if you haven't done that one yet, go ahead and do that one first before you do this one. But the first one that we did is the foothills, the prairies, and a little bit of the Rocky Mountains at the top. Um, I hope you had a success with that lesson and if you want to, if you retried it, if you didn't like your first attempt, then I hope that you were happier with your second attempt. This time we were going to be, we are going to be doing a painting on the prairies with no mountains or foothills in the background. So this is the painting we are going to be working on today. So we are going to get started just like we did last time by gathering our supplies, we will um, measure our, our paper and tape it down to our table. We will paint in several steps and let it dry in between so the colors don't bleed. This time I have made sure to insert a little clip telling you when to let it all dry. So hopefully that helps you. And then at the end we will be doing the ink work at the, for detail, just like we did last time. So that's the kind of st the style that I like to do is um, some people call it ink and wash. So you get a waterproof marker like we did on our first painting and then you can even paint over top of it if you need to and it won't bleed. So the sharp that's what's really nice about the Sharpies compared to another black marker like say a washable Crayola marker or something. The Sharpies will not bleed and that is important if you are doing any layers of watercolor over on, on top of them. So we have, as you can see, it's a pretty um, similar color palette to our first one with the greens, the blues, the browns, the yellows. So all of these three will hopefully go nicely in a frame set together. You can keep them for yourself, give them to a friend, whatever you'd like. So let's get started and I will switch the camera down so you can see all my supplies and get yours together as we go. Feel free to pause the video at any point if you need to catch up or you're falling behind or you want to take a little bit more time to do extra details in your painting, but I'm going to turn you down now. So let's get started with some clean water, which you will want to change periodically. It's a paintbrush, your paints. I have my masking tape. I have my eraser and my pencil and my rag, or you can use paper towels. I have my Sharpie marker and a ruler and scissors. So I am going to get started. I have my reference photo too as well. And we're gonna get started with cutting our paper into the appropriate size and taping it down. So I am doing this one five by seven as well as just like we did our first lesson. So I'm going to measure five inches all the way across. <clears throat> and draw the line down. And once you kind of visually check to make sure it's square, you can cut it out. I'm taking my eraser and just taking off the extra pencil marks on the side. And now we are ready to tape it down. So clean off your bench of all the eraser shavings and grab your masking tape. I like to tape one side. Oh, and like I mentioned in the first video, if you would like to tape this down to a clipboard so you can move it, feel free to do that. It's a really convenient way to have it on the go. Once you smooth it all out, you can put the tape down on the other side, make sure there's no bumps. If there is a bump, peel up one side and smooth it out really flat. We don't want the any bumps to start with or the water will pool and collect in ways that we don't want it to. 
so it's nice and flat. And then do the tops and bottoms. And we are ready to sketch. So grab your reference photo and we will start sketching out just the basic shapes. I'm going to start with the horizon and then this kind of secondary horizon where the trees are, are growing. Sketch out the fence posts. and the wires. We'll do the first hay bale. I do a round for the front, do a little bit of a curve for the side that will have a little bit of the shade on it. Just fixing the shape a little bit. I wasn't too happy with that. And we are going to draw a line for the flat bottom of the hay bale on the ground. Because it's not perfectly bottom flat. Or, sorry, it's not perfectly round all the way around because of the ground. So we want to portray that. I'll do the second hay bale a bit further back in the distance. The further back you go, the less detail you need. I started with the same front, round front, draw the side, flatten out the bottom. And there are a few little small hay bales in the very background. Far off in the distance. I'm going to just draw some little ones in there. Now we're going to start on the trees. We are just going to roughly sketch out the trunks and branches, no leaves yet. So I'm not basing my trees exactly the same as in the reference photo. You could draw as many or as few trees as you'd like, however spaced out you'd like. I don't ever really take the reference photo for an exact. You just kind of put your own spin on it. And there's another little hay bale in the background there. If you don't have space for it, that's okay. And like last time, remember to try to make the pencil marks light. We are going to take our paintbrush and we are going to wet all of the area where the sky will be with just plain water all the way down to the horizon. You will be painting over the trees just for now. We'll put further detail on later on top of the blue sky, but we want the sky to go all the way down to the horizon. So nice and wet and, but no, you don't want any puddles, but kind of glisten. If you look at it at an angle, it should be glistening and evenly wet. Just not too dry and no puddles. Now I'm gonna mix up a blue with a little bit of the lighter blue that we have and a bit of the darker. And I'm going to make it, like as you can see in the reference photo, 
at the top of the sky there, it's darkest blue. And as it gets down towards the horizon, the blue gets lighter and lighter. So I'm going to apply the majority of my paint to the top of my painting and then just kind of squish it down, like sweep it down and it will get lighter and lighter as you get further and further away from where you first deposited the paint. We want it nice and light at the horizon. Just make sure you're using plenty of water for this, for the lighter parts and less water at the top for the darker parts. I think I'm going to add a little bit more blue in there at the top. And once you're happy with it, you can let it sit and it will kind of mellow out as you let it dry. And we're going to do the same for the field portion where we're going to do the grass. You're going to want to paint everything except the large hay bales with plain water. Just avoid where the hay bales are, but other than that, you can cover over the trees and cover over the distance. Just avoid those little hay bales as well as if you can. This is going to be a pretty light wash, so even if you get a little bit of the green onto the hay bales, as long as it's light, you won't be able to notice it once you put the details in. So I'm going to mix up a light green here and slowly just put a really light wash all over where the grass is going to be in your painting. I'm just using a combination of the dark and light greens, maybe a little yellow or brown in there. So just mix it up until you get the color that you like. It doesn't have to be the same shade of green as I have whatever you would like for your field color to be. This is just the base layer, so we'll have lots on top of this. So when you drop the paint into the wet areas, it will naturally kind of spread out all over where you have the water. This, is, this technique is called wet on wet, so wet paint on wet paper. If you don't wet the paper, that technique would be called wet on dry, wet paint on dry paper. But I like the wet and wet for a very foreground. It makes for a nice and even um, color distribution. So just making sure to avoid the hay bales, but getting as close to the pencil as you can. <clears throat> so it looks um, continuous and not like it just abruptly stops right before the hay bale. I'm just spreading out the um, blue paint on the sky a little bit. It looked a little bit weird to me, but if your sky looks fine, just, just go ahead and skip that. You want to try and get a nice, even, smooth wash. Now I'm going to do some light um, of yellow, this yellow ochre, for our first layer on the hay bales. I would like to do just a really light wash. So if you have a little bit of excess paint or too much, too dark of color, just soak it up with your brush or your rag. Just a tiny bit of the yellow ochre for those taints hay bales way off in the distance. I'm going to put a little brown in there. As you can see, like I'm just mixing it right on the paper. It's maybe a little bit too dark for the first wash, but I'm, I'll take care of that with a little bit of a rag after. I just wanted it to be more of a brownie yellow instead of just plain yellow yellow ochre. So I'm just going to dab some of that excess co color off. When you're happy with the first wash, we will let it dry completely and come back to it once it is bone dry. So with some 
clean water. I got a new batch of water. I am going to start by doing a little bit more detail in the grass. So I'm mixing up a different shade of green that's a bit different from the base layer that we did and it's going to be a little bit darker. And I'm going to start putting just some stripes in the grass as you can see in the field. The field isn't completely green. There's patches of lighter yellowy green grass and probably some dirt in there. So I'm going to do the stripes across with the different shades of green, yellow and brown. And we want these all to kind of mix together, meld together, but not too much. We want the different colors to show through, but we don't want it to be really dark and we don't want it to be like stripes like a, a zebra. We want the colors to be distinct, but we also want them to meld together and look um, uniform and smooth. So you can, if your colors are looking really distinct from each other, you can get just plain water on your brush and kind of mix them together. But as long as you're working wet and wet, so your green paint is still wet when you're applying the brown or the yellow paint, it should mix together nicely and look smooth. I'm doing a little bit a second layer on these distant hay bales in the light light brown with lots of water added to dilute it and I'm taking some black and watering it down nicely with some brown to make a dark brown and with that dark brown I am going to do the fence posts. We're going to be using that same dark brown again later. Oh, it bleed a, bled a little bit into the green, so I'm going to take my um, rag and soak up that brown. I don't want the brown there. I'd, that's the what happens when you don't let it dry, the green dry completely before you added the brown. But I soaked it up and it, we'll do that part again in a sec. Just making sure not to touch the wet paint of the green this time. So that's our first layer for our fence posts. with some brown and a bit of the yellow ochre mixed in. And I'm gonna add a little water to dilute it. I'm gonna take, take some of that paint and put it off to the side and add extra water to it. And we're gonna start doing some of the next layer of details on the hay bale. I'm doing some um, C shapes around to show the rolled, rolled hay. And the bottom on the side there is pretty dark with a shadow. So I'm going to put a nice layer of dark there and we will continue building up that shadow as we go. I'm doing a little bit more detail on the back one. Keep the, that, well, I guess the second one. Keep the second one not quite as detailed and not quite as dark as colors, as dark of colors as the one closest to you. There was a little brown that got away on me, so I dabbed that up with my rag. And we are going to use that brown that we mixed for the fence post with the brown and black, and we're going to start painting the tree trunks. So you're going to want to make, paint the main trunk thicker at the bottom and get thinner as you go up to the top. And you want the branches. You don't want the branches to be sticking out um, horizontally off the tree. You want them to be coming, keep going, paint, paint along the trunk and then separate from the main trunk to make a branch. So keep do your brush along the trunk and then casually divert off to this one of the sides. You want the branches to look natural, as if they're coming off of the tree, not as if they're just slapped on top. You can do as many branches or as few branches as you want. These um, trunks don't have to be super detailed. 
We will be covering them over top of them with some leaves later on. So I'll just continue along the row making all these different tree trunks. Right. When you're done with your tree trunks, we are going to do the dark shadow side of the fence posts. So as you can see in this painting, the sun is coming from the left. So the shadows are falling behind to the right. So I'm going to do the dark side of the fence post on the right side. Just like the dark side of the hay bale is on the right side. <clears throat> I am going to mix a little bit of a brownie green, so a bit of the yellow ochre, a bit of the brown, and the darkest green to make a nice dark grassy. And I'm going to be showing, painting the back fields, the foreground on an angle, just kind of stripes <clears throat> behind where the trees would be in the distance. You can do these diagonal lines as thick as th or thin as you want. You can do them as dark or light as you want. Whatever fits your aesthetic. Just make sure they go all the way to the horizon and are can if they top out at the top of the horizon, make it nice and flat at the top. Washing your brush off of that green, we are going to come back to the hay bale and put a nice highlighted yellowish color on the top where the sun is hitting it. That was a bit too bright of a yellow for me, so I'm going to suck some of that off with my cloth. I wasn't loving the... Uh, pastel or the um, primary yellow there. So we're going to go with a little bit more of a brownie yellow and do the underside where there's a bit of a shadow under the top of the hay. We're kind of negative painting, which me negative painting is where you paint where you don't want the lights to be. So if you have the um, highlight on the top and then underneath you can see that dark shadow the negative painting would be painting the dark parts to highlight the upper part. I'm just going to suck up some of that extra paint and just continue painting in the C shapes to make it look like the rolled up hay. I am getting some of the white and I'm going to add a little bit of lighter spots. Oh, my negative painting kind of um, smudged away as it is, but that's okay. I'm 
making just a little bit of brownie green and we're going to start painting these grass the unmowed part of the grass in the front fr closest portion of the painting to us first i'm going to just take my sharpie and draw the wires on our fence so that some of the grass that we paint can be coming up close to the fence I'm going to take that green, brown and green that we mixed up and start painting some grass. This is going to be the very base layer, so just make nice um, grass kind of shapes, but don't worry too much if it doesn't look great. This is going to be light and it's going to be the background. We don't want the um, grass in the front to look nice and smooth or mowed or anything. We want it to be kind of weedy, overgrown grass. So we're going to make it, the background nice and um, mottled. Some of, make sure you do some of it up to the fence. We don't want there to be a white spot where the fence is. And now I'm just going to put the shadows on the trees. So just like we did the shadows on the fence posts and on the hay bales, we want the right side of the trees to tree trunks to be a bit of a darker brown than the left side. Just based off of where the sun is hitting this image. I'm mixing up a nice dark green with a bit more brown and putting another darker layer of messy grass on top of the first layer that we did. My first layers are already dried because it's pretty hot out today, but um, it's okay if they melt or meld together a little bit as well, whatever preference you would prefer. So we just want a variety of different shades of green in this grassy, unkempt area. So you can mix yellow, brown, even a little bit of blue in with different with the greens to make different shades of green. And if something looks a little bit too sharp, you can just get plain water on your brush and um, mellow it out by mixing the plain water in with the darker colors that you want to mute. My hay bales are dry in the meantime, and I'm going to outline the front a little bit more distinctly. We are going to be coming back over that with the Sharpie as well, but I'm going to do a little bit of paint, a few more C shapes in the middle for another layer of rolled up hay and I'm going to distinguish that shadow on the right side even more. We want that shadow to be nice and dark. And it distinguish the shadow on the further back ones as well. Just a tiny line on the far, far away ones and a bit of a bigger line on the medium. You can, um, oh yeah, don't forget that little one in the far back. Once you're happy with how the shadows look, you can, I'm going to start adding a little bit of that yellow ochre to the fields so it's not just the plain green. If you did that in the first step, then you can just skip this or you can continue adding another layer. The more layers, the honestly, the um, more complex and detailed it looks. But if you're happy with the way yours looks, then go ahead and skip. I'm going to mix up a dark green, so a green with some black and a little brown, and make the shadows for our our um, hay bales and trees. So just 
a quick swipe behind to the right of where the hay bales are. Bigger on the big hay bale and um, smaller on the smaller hay bale. Just a quick swipe of that darker color will make a nice um, shadowy look. The trees also have a pretty dark shadow. <clears throat> so I'm making a nice dark one for that one as well. Darker than the um, hay veil shadows. So as you can see, the tree shadows just kind of go slightly underneath the trunks and all the way along the bottom because the shadows from other trees are underneath the next ones in line. So as long as, long as you're happy with the um, way your shadows look, then we can continue on to the next portion. As you can um, see, I'm just kind of jumping from spot to spot based on what is dry and what is still wet, letting things dry in between as I work. I'm going to start on the tree branch or tree leaves by mixing a nice dark green and just kind of dabbing where the branches are with um, small dabs. You still want to be able to see some of the blue sky in the background, just like you do in the reference photo. So just along the different trunk and branches, sometimes in front of the trunk, sometimes letting the trunk peek through, the brown of the branches peek through. The um, leaves don't have to be in the same shape as the leaves in the reference photo, just make them look like cute little trees and you will be good. Some branches and trees will have more leaves, some fewer. I'm just varying the green color you know, on the different trees. We don't want them all to be completely uniform, just a slightly different shade of green. So just continue painting on the leaves until you're happy with the way it looks. I'm going to mix a bit of black in with that green to make a nice dark green to go on the shadow side of some of the trees, which is the right side. So just place a little bit of the dark green on the right side where the light wouldn't be hitting the tree. This is just to give it a, the trees a bit more depth instead of being all the same green color. We will also be adding a little bit of a light, some light spots to the trees on the left side. So I'm going to clean off my brush nice and good and we are going to do a little some smudges, green smudges along the bottom for the background grass. Just another layer on that grass to make it look messy and unkempt. And just some plain water. I'm just um, smudging that green that we just put down. I 
And now I'm going to do a little bit of flicking water. So I got some really loose paint, some watery paint, and I'm going to put it on my brush and kind of flick my brush to get some splatter on the page. This splatter will help make the uh, grass in the foreground here really um, whimsical and loose. So I'm doing a variety of different browns, yellows, and greens for my splatter at the front. And smudging some of those in a little bit with some plain water and leaving some splattered. I just like the messy kind of whimsical look that gives it. I'm going to do another layer on the fields, making sure to bring some of that green down to the fence. I noticed that my fence um, area is looking pretty white behind those wires, so I want to make sure there's enough color there so it doesn't look like I'm, I missed a spot. I am going to do another, yet another layer on this hay bale. The layers of watercolor was is what really brings out the detail and the depth of a painting. Unlike with, say, acrylic, you can't paint with one color on top of the other until it's completely dry. So you have to let it dry in between layers. Like it, in a hay bale in real life, there are so many um, different colors and layers of the um, hay. So we're trying to mimic that with the several layers of watercolor paint. And reinforcing that shadow again. And we are going to let the painting dry completely before our next step. Okay, now when it's dry, we'll come back with some nice, a nice clean jug of water and we are going to mix up some green. As you can see, the dried, um, the grass that has dried in the foreground here is so nice and speckled and whimsical. I love it. It's a nice contrast to the um, smooth detail of the paintings, of the rest of the painting. I added a little bit of white to some green and I'm going to be painting the highlights on the left side of the tree leaves. So after the um, paint, the trees were all dry, you can add this white light green onto the top of it and it will create a nice highlight in the trees. Just like kind of where the sun would be hitting those leaves in the front. I'm gonna rinse off my brush, grab that some more of that dark green and I'm mixing it with a little bit of blue. And re putting a little bit more on that dark side. Just touching it up as you see fit. I am going to add a little bit of water to that brown that I was using that had dried out previously and continue making our last little details on the front of the hay bale. I made a little white mixed with it to do the top again. And just doing a little touch up anywhere you think it can use a little final touch up. I'm putting just a little bit of white to 
add a bit more definition and distinct layers to the hay bale yet again. And doing a final little bit more on the shadow. I'm just taking a second to see where I want to add any more details before we work on to the second, to the last step with the Sharpie. Sorry, you can't exactly see what I was doing there. I was just adding a little bit more of the darker brown. Just adding a bit more dark brown to those back hay bales. And I just realized that that one in the middle there is kind of covered up by trees, but that's okay. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of a dark, some dark grass to the very foreground. It's all about the layers. making sure I bring the grass up right to the fence line. I'm taking the yellow and brown and adding a few little kind of grassy stalks, like the um, grass that's gone to seed, that kind of color mixed in with the, with the green. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to the fence post to make sure they have a distinct flat top. Sorry, my hand is blocking what I'm doing here, but just making sure they have a nice flat top instead of it had a bit of a rounded top before. making a nice black, blacky green, and just doing another layer on the tree's shadows. It's just nice and shady back there in the reference photo, so I want to make sure that comes through in my painting. Just doing kind of hair thin shadows on those far away hay bales, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And I'm just doing a small, light, very light shadow on these two fence posts with the same blacky brown, blacky green, sorry. I'm just doing a little bit of splatter of 
green, dark green splatter over the trees. Just trying my best not to get it in the grassy areas, but you can also, if you do, you, we can just get a little bit of water and smooth that out. I have a bit of light green for a bit more splatter just on the trees if you can. And then I'm going to smooth out that splatter that got onto the grass with some just some water. Making sure not to smudge the shadows that we put in. I wanted to add a little bit more green. It was looking a little bit um, light. And making sure to get nice green in that fence area. It is darker in person than it looks on the video, but I just wanted to make sure that that nice green comes through. It was looking a little pale. And I realized I got it a little bit too close to my front splatter grass area, so I sucked some of that up with my rag and got some water to smooth that out a bit more. Just adding a little bit more deep deeper of a color for some depth. And making sure that there's no white patches just around surrounding the hay bales. Getting some nice green in there too. And I'm just doing a plain water wash on that back further field to kind of blend the colors together. If you want to add any more details to the grass here in the foreground, you can. I'm just adding a bit of a really dark green. And we're gonna let that dry completely. This one's really important to let it dry absolutely. And because now we're gonna put away our paints and start working on the ink wash. So grab your Sharpie and I'm going to define the horizon back there. It doesn't have to be exactly just like our first um, lesson. It doesn't have to be exactly on the line. It can be a little bit above, a little bit below, a little bit bendy, whatever you want. I like to do mine a little bit abstract so it's not exactly where everything is supposed to be. I'm going to define that with a second horizon there. A little bit of definition on the fence posts. And I'm going to do some curvy squiggles in the trees just for a little bit of interest. I like the look of the ink and paint wash. I'm going to just do a little bit shadow. <clears throat> and I'm going to start defining my hay bales. I started out by just doing a circle at the very, to show where the very front is. Some C shapes in there with the black. Onto the top and a nice dark line down where the shadow is. And we're going to do the same with that second hay bale. Maybe do a few little grass marks in some of the less distinct areas. And sign it with your signature or initials. And we will start taking off the tape. The paint will be dry in the last step, so don't worry about that. Just slowly, carefully remove the painter's tape so it doesn't rip your painting.
And voila, we have our second of our Albertan Landscape watercolor cl beginner class painting done. Thanks for joining me and we, I will see you for our next class.